Now first, let's understand this little army. Who is it? How does it work? How does it look? This army, our immune system has many layers of immunity. By immunity, I mean protection. First, this little army tries to stop the invaders from getting inside you by creating a barrier. And then if they don't succeed, because we've actually got to talk with our mouths open and then we've got to breathe. So when these little invaders manage to sneak in, maybe through our nose, maybe through our mouth and so on, the little army of ours sneaks up behind these bad guys who may be, you know, the viruses, the bacteria or the fungi, and then they actually try to break their neck completely in style. So at first, the invaders meet the border guards of our army, our skin and all other mucous membranes. Now, we think that since our skin is so occupied in holding all our organs and organ systems inside, we forget the main purpose for which it was created, defense. Pretty hard to penetrate, oily, acidic, a perfect barrier to most pathogens that want to wiggle their way into us. And then you have the mucous membranes. They line the membranes of all organs like your nose, respiratory tract, eyelids, which unsurprisingly produce, yes, mucus, a viscous fluid whose objective is to trap these incoming invaders in slimy goo and push them out of your body. Oh, and by the way, when some dust comes in and you sneeze, that's also your immune system trying to shoot out these invaders. And if the microbes pass this initial line of defense, you see a response called inflammatory response. In simple words, swelling. You are going to learn about them in later classes. But just for a mention, you have the mast cells that come into the fight arena and trigger the response of the body to the invader's presence by giving a response in the area of the pathogen invasion with say redness and swelling, obviously a bit of pain and maybe some fever as well. So the local response in this case will be the redness, swelling, pain and the general response or the overall response would be the fever. So this is a nice thing to happen if you get a thorn in your foot or some itchy fungus on your face. But the alarm bells are not really required when a peanut hits you or you eat up one peanut when you are allergic to it. The inflammatory response gets triggered anyway. You might have actually seen these indications on most chocolates, right? Like a, like a warning almost may contain traces of nuts. Why do you do that? That's because some people are allergic to nuts and their immune system starts going haywire, getting into action when they actually ingest a nut. Now, most of the army inside you comprises of white blood cells or leukocytes. You visited those in the cells chapter. And it's like they have these VIP passes because they can go anywhere in your body other than the most high security areas, which include parts of your central nervous system, the brain, and your spinal cord. So some leukocytes called neutrophils uh, engulf these invaders through a process called phagocytosis. And then they basically die themselves, giving up their lives and becoming martyrs. Now, you've got another group of white blood cells called macrophages, big, big guns of the immune system, who, you know, not only hang around like security guards in your various organs and all that, but they also vanquish these invaders. They act like in-house eliminators by killing off your own body cells if there's something wrong with it. That's why it's special and super useful because they can attack cancer cells because cancer cells are nothing but cells of our own body gone wrong. And uh, also they don't shrivel up and die once they eat the enemy. They hang around, maybe eat a hundred or so bacteria. And after they do that, only after they do that much, they roll up and die. So the next type of cell called the natural killer cell, at least we have a nice cool English easy name to remember here, are deadly because they go around like troops in your body. And when they see a cell that's not normal, they take out their armor. Basically, they bind with the enemy cell and then they dissolve the membrane so that the cell cannot function anymore. Sneaky, but effective. Now, I've kept a very, very special kind of cell for the last called the dendritic cell. I call it the cell with brains because this cell can create a memory and it's super, super important because once they eat up the pathogens, they don't just rejoice about their latest kill, but they carry information about their pathogens back 
for the liver, spleen, lymph nodes, so that the body actually remembers these guys the next time they try to get it. This cell is so important that it plays a huge role in preventing our body from contracting all those pathogens all over again. How is what I have saved for the last bit of this chapter. This type of response forms part of the acquired immune system or immunity that you develop in your lifetime, not that you're born with. This is so important, so important. We're going to look at it in a short while in much more detail. Our immune system need not get activated unless we fall ill. And by fall ill, I mean when we don't keep good health. When our body becomes susceptible to the hanky-panky these pathogens can do, when they come in contact with various parts of our body, that's when all hell breaks loose. And that's when you actually need to take a day off from school, from play, from everything that you think is fun and just curl up in bed below that blanket and try to go to sleep.